All right, I've spent a lot of time working on this, so I gotta give it a real test here. Um, lots and lots of hours have gone into this, uh, just trying to get this audio and video right, so let's do a real recording, shall we? So uh, let me transition over here to my um, Studio One setup. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, if you're not an audio engineer, I wouldn't expect you to know what the heck any of this is, but I'll try to run through it real quick. First of all, I'll talk about my hardware. So I've got a copy of a Sennheiser SM57, I believe, the one without the roundy knobby thing. It's got the flat plane, um, more directional, I guess you'd say. Um, that's going into a PreSonus Studio 68C uh, with the gain almost on maximum um, The microphone's pretty far away from my face, so I have to have the gain pretty much cranked on that sucker uh, If you look here in my studio one the the first thing I'm doing uh, is I have um, I have a lot of inserts, but uh, I Have an expander as my first thing that's to cut out the noise in my room. So I will go silent and show you what that does uh, right off the bat uh, you'll hear it silence out the room and then uh, if I turn it off um, you'll hear all the noise in the room you can actually hear it while I'm talking but anyway so I'll go quiet there's very little noise so if I turn that off all that noise is coming through when I don't talk. So anyways, that, that removes some room noise. Got a lot of tweaking left to do on that. Uh, that then pipes into an EQ. Um, most pro microphones roll off the low end. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, I've got a low cut at 90 Hertz with a slope of 12 decibels per octave. Um, that I still have some tuning left to do on that. Um, the Sennheiser mics that usually see people using in professional studios have a little clicker thing on the bottom that uh, rolls off the low ends. I don't know. I need to do some research to see where they're doing it on that microphone. Um, I'm just guessing where to put it for now, so don't know if it's right. Uh, if I didn't roll off the low end, you would hear lots of boominess and every time i click on my mouse and stuff or hit the desk or something it would be you know blow out your eardrums uh, the other thing i'm doing is i'm boosting the low frequencies so uh obviously uh, one of my influencers is howard stern's voice and i'm self-conscious about what my voice sounds like so i want to boost the low end a little bit uh, I got it 3 dB up at uh, 300 hertz center frequency, a Q of 1.2. So um, I don't know if that's aggressive or conservative. Um, I read a guide about Howard Stern's voice and this was close to what they said trying to replicate it, including this uh, higher frequency shelf at 12 decibels uh, per octave. Um, I'm only 2 dB up there. I don't know what that's really doing. Um, I was playing around with gain, uh, but um, I decided I wanted to do all my gain in the compressor um, instead of in the EQ because I want to try turning the EQ off like that. So that's totally flat, and then that's EQ back on. Uh, anyways, uh, so that pipes down into my compressor. Uh, I'm doing a lot of compression, mostly because... Uh, the mic is so far away from my face, um, so I have to flatten it. I have to boost what's quiet, and I have to flatten out what's loud. Um, I, ideally, the microphone would be uh, way closer to me, and I actually ordered a, a mic boom arm to get the microphone closer to my face so that I can actually turn the gains down on everything. As you can see here, uh, my gains on uh, this compressor are massive. Um, I'm doing 27 dB of gain because my input is so low. Um, anyways, uh, this is a, a preset. Well, I've turned it into a preset, but um, I won't go over all these settings because I'm still learning how this works. But 
basically this is a ton of compression. This is uh, the threshold's way down, so it's it's working for very quiet stuff. And then um, the ratio is cranked way up. Four to one is pretty high compared to what other people are running. Um, this doesn't have a built-in limiter as far as I know. I was using a different compressor, but now I'm using uh, this one. Anyways, uh, that's um, the last in the insert chain for my input. Um, that then pipes over to a limiter that's an insert on the main out. So um, I chose to do negative one dB limiting um, I don't want to mess with this too much. Uh, it could just be at zero, but um, I'm going to try negative one for now. I don't really want to hit zero. I mean, it might be too easy to clip, so um, I'm going to leave it at negative one. There's actually too many settings on this limiter for me. I know it's really powerful, but I don't even really want this many settings. I just want to put a hard cap on it so that nothing... Uh, clips or you know goes over zero decibels so then after it goes through the limiter there's a, a post fader um you could call it a send but it's well it is a send so uh this is a restream which is part of the uh reaper plugin suite um so what that's doing is that's sending it sending this output to the input on um ob studio so without this plugin i wouldn't really be able to record um properly because i don't have enough audio routing options uh to get this full mix out of my daw presona studio one into ob studio but um i i'm not set up to record my ob studio setup but that's pretty freaking complex also but anyways uh this is really a test to see if all my levels are correct, my noise gate's correct, my EQ's correct, compressor, limiter. Uh, I could have recorded this wrong, who knows. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's go back to the full cam. I got a transition up here. So anyways, that's pretty cool, huh? So uh, that's my audio setup and my creaky ass chair and the weird background in my room. Um, maybe that helps someone out, I don't know, anyways. Test complete.